break down how you deal with a menstrual cup in public. Hi, and welcome to the channel. My name is Kim Rosas, and I'm a reusable period products expert. Here at Period Nirvana, we're going to give you tons of resources to help you find and succeed with a menstrual cup or disc. And if you're in the US and you're shopping for one, make sure to check out my reusable period products store, period.shop, where I curate an amazing selection of the best quality products. And one more thing, don't forget to subscribe. So how do you deal with a menstrual cup when you're out in public and you need to empty it? Let me calm you down a little bit because what you might not know is that you don't have to exit a stall with a blood covered cup. You can just stay in your stall. There are definitely really easy ways to navigate this. This video really applies to dealing with menstrual cups and discs in public. But if you watch to the end, I'm gonna specifically talk a little bit about how to handle discs because they might require a little more forethought than a menstrual cup when it comes to changing and cleaning in public. For all of these tips, it's a good idea to wash your hands before you go into the stall, just for hygiene reasons. Believe it or not, menstrual cups are actually more convenient than tampons or pads when you're out of the house and traveling. Menstrual cups and discs can be worn for up to 12 hours safely. You may never have to deal with a cup or a disc in a public restroom ever. And I know in your head that seems like it's not possible, but it really truly is. I travel with my cup or my disc all the time. I just got back from an overseas trip and I was on my period on a plane doing my touristy thing. So you'll actually see in these clips that I filmed some of my B-roll in a really cool bathroom in Munich, Germany, because I found it on Instagram. And I was like, you know what? This is the perfect place to film some shots for a video I had planned on this very topic. Who can resist a disco bathroom? We're gonna go through the ways that you can clean your cup in public. Number one is to have alcohol wipes or special cup wipes in your bag ready to go. These can be used to wipe up the cup. It sterilizes the cup. You can also use it to wipe your hands if you want. And it's pretty quick and easy. Of course, this requires that you pack the wipes. So you do need to have that in your purse. You could probably just get away with carrying them all the time in your purse. It doesn't have to be a special cup wipe product. You can even get those regular alcohol wipes that they give out at airplanes, that they give out at restaurants, that you give out at eye cleaners. I have a ton of those for my eyeglasses. Just any wet alcohol wipe will do. Number two is having an on-the-go sterilizing and cleaning spray on hand in your bag. When you've removed your cup, you can wipe it off with toilet paper, spray it down, and then after you spray it, go ahead and dry it off with toilet paper, and then you put it right back in. You can also use this to clean your fingers because it's basically um, hand sanitizer. Number three is a little bit heftier, but that is to have a water bottle and bring that with you to the stall and use it to rinse your cup. I don't have a Perry bottle, which is what really works great for this. One of those squeeze bottles, this one's very similar. Fill the bottle under the faucet when you walk into the bathroom first to save weight if you want. Rinse off the cup in your stall and you can use it to rinse your fingers if you need to. It, you can even use it to clean yourself, which a lot of people enjoy, especially if you fill it with warm water. It's essentially a handheld bidet. And you could buy a handheld bidet and use it to wash your cup. You could fill it with cold water if you want, or you could fill it with warm water at the sink, depending on what situation you're in. I am a warm water girly. I have a warm water bidet in my water closet upstairs. It's life-changing. I hate traveling because now I have to use regular toilets. Uh, always nice to be home to my bidet. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when you're on the go for cup usage or for personal hygiene uses, if you want, you can have one of these squeeze bottles and use it for all of the above. If you just happen to have a bottle of water and you don't mind sparing some, you can use that as well. So bottle, squeeze, pour, whatever. This is a really great tip and I'm assuming I probably picked it up on the Period Nirvana community, which is a Facebook group full of great support and resources for menstrual cup and disc users. So plugging that in case you ever want some place to chat about menstrual cups and discs, we have an amazing team over there. Number four is one you really don't have to prep for, but you might have to be lucky for. When you enter the public bathroom, look for a paper towel dispenser. Grab a few sheets from that. Hopefully they have one. Hopefully it's not an all hand dryer situation. Wet it under the faucet and bring that with you into the stall. Once you've removed the cup, you can then take your damp paper towel, wipe the cup clean as much as you need, put it back in, go about your day. I feel like tip number four is one that works for people like me who were completely unprepared at all times. And so I don't like to 
think about packing my purse with special items. I don't typically have much more than hand sanitizer and a mask in my bag and a wallet. So these are all for forgetful people and unprepared people like me who could use the resources around them if they need to, to clean the cup. But I'll tell you my tip, and this is the one that I use if I ever have to empty my cup in public. I guess technically this is number five, and that is just taking it out, dumping it, and putting it right back in. That's it. I just take out my cup like I would any other time at home, dump the contents into the toilet. Depending on what it looks like, I might wipe it with a little toilet paper, but typically I don't even do that. I just fold it as it is, insert it. You know, if there's any blood on my fingers, I'm going to wipe them with toilet paper and carefully exit the stall not to get blood on anything, which because I don't have a messy removal is usually actually never an issue. And then I go to the public sink and I wash my hands. And you don't have to prep anything. You didn't have to bring wipes. You didn't have to bring cleansers. You didn't have to bring any special tools or whatever. That's it. Remember at the top of the video, I mentioned that you only have to wash the cup every 12 hours. If you're emptying more frequently, if you're emptying every three or five or eight hours and it happens to be in public, you could just skip the wash. Just put it right back in. And then when you're in your own home or you have, you know, soaps that you really trust, you can use that and you can do it in the comfort of your home. There is a scenario that I haven't mentioned, but it is the holy grail of public bathrooms. And that is having your own private sink in your own private room. If you're in the scenario, then really you just do what you would normally do at home. Just remove it. If you have really sensitive skin, it's probably best to go ahead and skip using the wash that they use, the soap itself, and just rinse it with water and then put it back in and then wash it with what you feel comfortable using at home. And another good scenario is to look out for an accessible stall that has a sink if you really want to rinse it in private, but use your best judgment. The accessible stall is there for people who need it. Decide if this is a good opportunity to use it. Uh, obviously, if it's a busy, area, like a Taylor Swift concert, you wanna probably leave that open. All of the cleaning methods, one through five, they all apply to a menstrual disc as well. Same story. But I will tell you that menstrual discs can be an overall messier product when they're out of your body than a menstrual cup. With a menstrual cup, when you remove it, mostly everything is messy on the inside and you dump it and you kind of wash the inside, maybe a little bit on the outside. With a menstrual disc, it can be messy on both sides. It can be all covered in blood. For that reason, you might feel better with some of the options that include a full wipe down, you know, having the wipes with you, having the water bottle and squirting it and cleaning it off and rinsing it fully, using a paper towel. Of all of them, I think using one of these squirt bottles and having that on hand or one of the sprays, that's gonna really do a good job for you. I have really only ever had to deal with my menstrual disc in a public restroom. I mean, I can count less than one hand number of times. I remember one of my first instances was when I was trying a reusable disc the first time, the Ziggy Cup, and I was in a New York City public bathroom. I was out to eat with a friend and she was going to the bathroom with me. We both had to use this bathroom really bad because you know in New York, it's really hard to find bathrooms. So I we went to lunch and we both ran to the bathroom. Um, and my disc, because it was slipping, I didn't need to empty it because it was full. I needed to completely just remove it and readjust it. And I felt I probably should just wash this. But I found myself in a situation where it was just covered in blood and I just didn't really think, mm, maybe I should shoot it back in. This was many, many years ago. So I had her block the stall, like the entrance to the public door. And then I used the sink and I washed it there. Um, but I think knowing what I know now, I probably could have handled that a little bit better and I probably could have just put it in. But at the time I was like, oh, and I did the whole thing. Uh, I was in like flop sweat. But I don't have to empty it in public because menstrual discs do uh, a thing called auto dumping. So if you have a very heavy period and you're worried about being in a public restroom, you might want to try a disc because you can self empty it somewhat on demand, person and product dependent. It's not a guarantee, but when you're on the toilet, you can bear down and it tilts some of the contents leave, goes back into place, or you might have to manually put a finger in and tuck it back into place. But most of the contents are now gone, meaning you basically just drained the oil a little bit to give yourself more time to hold more to get home. So I can self-empty when my disc is really full, and that means if I happen to be out in public, 
I don't have to fully remove it and touch it and clean it and all the other steps that you would do if you pulled it out of your body. Um, I don't have to physically engage with it because mine just goes right back into place. If you have to physically engage with it, meaning you need to tuck it back up, it's just a finger, you can wipe it and wash your hands after. I wanted to be completely frank, you can still use any of those cleaning techniques, but if you remove your disc and they just seem like way too messy to manage in public, then you want to think ahead and have a squirt bottle or whatever just in case. Or you can skip using a disc if you know you're gonna be out and about all day long and it's going to be a pain in the butt. There's nothing wrong with changing your period product for the situation that works for you. I'm a big believer in using what works best, especially when you're on the go. Uh, I haven't actually been testing a lot of products lately because I've been traveling on my period, like every single period I happen to be out of town, which is inconvenient when you're trying a new product that might not work. Um, but if you know what your situation is and that it's kind of a little bit too much to deal with in public, maybe use a disposable product or use period underwear or whatever it is that's gonna make your life easier and not stress you out. It's not an all or nothing thing with reusables. It's what fits the situation at the time. I stick to reusable discs when I'm traveling because I know I can self empty them in public. I know they're leak free for me all the time um, and I'm not gonna have any fit or slippage issues when I'm doing my tourist thing. So that's it. Uh, I think that there's a lot of ways to deal with emptying your cup in public. Uh, there's a lot of techniques you can use for dealing with your disc in public. Hopefully, if you're someone who has an average period, then you don't even have to think about it because you get 12 hours. It's morning and night and everything in between. It's just you going about your day and your period product catching your blood without having to empty it in public. That's everything. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this helped ease some of your anxiety about using menstrual cups and what that looks like when you're in the real world and not just sitting on your couch because we have our periods when we work, we have our periods when we play, we have our periods when we're at school. Uh, it's not just something that you end up sitting at home all day. Although I work from home, so sometimes it is like that. <laughs> And that's okay. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Once you've remo removed, <laughs> one, cat just sneezed. My cat. Kitty. Cat found a Nerf dart. <laughs>